The Harmony in the Universe All scientific research has revealed that a highly detailed and calculated structure pervades the universe in which we live. Many things, visible or invisible, from the viscosity of water to the speed of light, from the structure of the atom to gravity, stem from this feature of the universe. The renowned scientist Albert Einstein describes this harmony that can be observed in every point around us as the grandeur of reason that assumes physical form in the universe. Yet some scientists imagine that this magnificent structure of the universe is the result of a cause and effect relationship that developed over the course of time. Accounting for life and other physical existence in terms of a cause and effect relationship basically depends on material interaction in time. However, there was a moment when there was no matter, no energy, and even no time. Certain scientists unable to point to any material cause for that moment are today experiencing great concern and difficulty. The reason for this is the starting point of the universe, the great explosion originally referred to as the Big Bang. The definitive conclusion arrived at by astrophysics is that the entire universe came into being in a zero moment through a huge explosion. The Big Bang has proved that the entire universe came into being through the explosion of a single point, from nothing. The fact that there is a sun that warms our earth without burning it, or water that functions like a flawless thermostat on its surface, is possible by the present structure of the atom. This structure of the atom must have been determined in the first moments of the explosion representing the beginning of the universe. In other words, all the physical and chemical properties of water were determined long before the earth and the living things on it existed. That being the case, the only thing that can be said is that the laws of physics, life, all living things and human beings are all part of a blueprint of creation. In his book Superforce, the American professor of physics Paul Davies says, If the world's finest minds can unravel only with difficulty the deeper workings of nature, how could it be supposed that those workings are merely a mindless accident, a product of blind chance? Scientific circles now think that the universe has a human purpose. According to this view, the universe was not brought into being for nothing. It has a purpose. All the physical balances in the universe have been very sensitively regulated for human life. Every detail in the universe has a purpose related to human life. This is proof of the existence of an almighty and omniscient creator who pervades every detail in the universe. That creator is Allah, the Lord of all things. Allah reveals in one verse in the Quran that I seek refuge in Allah from the accursed Satan. The keys of the unseen are in his possession. No one knows them but him. He knows everything in the land and sea. No leaf falls without his knowing it. There is no seed in the darkness of the earth and nothing moist or dry which is not in a clear book. In this film you are about to watch you will see examples of the immaculate harmony in the universe, witnessing Allah's flawless creative artistry. The universe created to be compatible with human life. All research and investigation in the scientific arena reveal that the universe in which we live has a rational, measured and calculated structure. All ideal properties from the viscosity of water 
to the nervous system, whether we are aware of them or not, have been described as the rationality of the universe. Einstein had this to say about the rationality imposed by science as a precondition for explaining the present state of the universe. Whoever has undergone the intense experience of successful advances made in this domain is moved by the profound reverence for the rationality made manifest in existence, the grandeur of reason incarnate in existence. The universe was not created for no reason. It has a purpose. All the physical balances in the universe have been very sensitively regulated for life. Every detail in the universe has been created for a purpose concerned with life. Allah reveals in a verse from the Quran that He is the Lord of all things. He to whom the kingdom of the heavens and the earth belongs, He does not have a son and He has no partner in the kingdom. He created everything and determined it most exactly. The universe has immutable laws that affect all living and non-living existence. Just like the living things that inhabit it, these unchanging laws are evidence that the universe was created flawlessly. These signs, which are mainly of concern to physicists today, are shown to us in the form of laws governing material life. Many properties that some people regard as the laws of physics and as quite ordinary are nothing else than proofs of Allah's perfect creation. These are all details that emerged after the Big Bang and that give the universe the form we perceive today. The scientific world refers to these details as the constants of nature. The number of atoms and all their subparticles in the universe, the ratio between the masses of the electron and the proton, the electrical charges of electrons and protons, or the speed of light, are some of the constants of the nature. It is a scientific fact that all these things are set at specific values that permitted the primordial gas to condense into nebula and stars and that would eventually come to give rise to our own planets. Even the very slightest change in these constants would mean that the order in the universe would not have come about and we would not exist. If you do not believe in the purpose and design, then you can argue that this is just chance and necessity. But it is silly to be caught with chance and necessity for your existence. All life, and of course all human beings, and that they are a part of the great creation plan. The importance of friction. You have probably always thought of friction, which we most commonly encounter in our daily lives as we try to push things as a force that causes difficulties. But what would a world in which there was no force of friction between bodies and surfaces have been like? The pen we hold would slip from our fingers. Books and notebooks would fall off the table and onto the floor. The table would slide across the floor and crash into the wall. In short, all bodies will slide and roll about until settling at the same level. In a world without friction, knots would unravel themselves, screws and nails would fall out, cars would be unable to turn corners, brakes would not hold, noise would never end, but would constantly echo from one wall to another. 
All these laws of physics that impose order on the universe are proofs that the universe has been created for the benefit of the living things in it. Allah created the unchanging laws that constitute the order in the universe and placed them at our service so that we might reflect on and understand His sublimity and give thanks for the blessings He has bestowed. Countless other examples could be cited of the sublimity and order in Allah's creation. Everything from the creation of the universe to the present moment has taken place through Allah's knowledge and under His dominion. The laws of nature surely could not have developed by chance or accident. What then is the answer to the question concerning the origin of innumerable laws of nature? I only know one answer that is adequate to their universal validity. They were created by God. God is omnipotent and omniscient. The balance of forces. What would happen if the force of gravity were slightly greater than what it is today? Running and even walking would become impossible. Human beings and animals would have to expend much more energy in order to perform these actions than they do now. In that event, the energy sources on the earth and particularly food sources would quickly be used up. And what if the force of gravity were slightly weaker? Light objects would be unable to remain in place. The dust and sand particles raised up by the slightest breeze will take hours to settle. Raindrops would fall much more slowly, evaporating again before hitting the ground. Rivers would slow down, making it impossible to obtain hydroelectric energy from them. This property is based on Newton's law of universal gravitation, which states that attraction forces decrease as bodies move away from one another. According to this law, if the distance between two celestial bodies were to increase threefold, the gravitational force would decrease ninefold, or if the distance were halved, the force would rise fourfold. This law explains why it is that the orbits of the Earth, the Moon, and the planets are regular. The laws of physics are in fact an explanation produced by human beings of the order created by Allah. Were there no such law and if a star's gravitational attraction decreased less as distance increased, then the orbits of the planets would not be elliptical, and the planets would follow a spiral course, falling directly towards the Sun. If the opposite were to apply, then the gravitational attraction of far distant stars would suppress that of the Sun, and the Earth would be pulled ever further away from the Sun. As a result, the Earth would either burn up as it drew ever closer to the Sun, or else freeze at absolute zero as it moved away from it. The current Big Bang Theory is the best explanation yet. To me, the concept of God is a logical outcome of the study of the immense universe that lies around us. The delicate measure in the proton charge. All the protons in the universe have a positive charge of 1.6 times 10 to the 19th. This enables the various protons inside the atom to repel one another. But protons do not detach from one another since the attraction between them is 100 times greater than their repulsive force. The mass of the proton is 1836 times greater than that of the electron. However, for some unknown reason, the electron has the same electrical charge as the proton, 1.6 times 10 to the 19. If the proton charge were slightly lower than what it actually is, then the attraction between protons would be much more powerful than it is now, and they would be attached to one another far more firmly. 
So what effects would this have on our universe? If the proton charge were slightly less than what it actually is, then the stars would quickly burn up all the fuels in their cores and would die within 100 million years. In such an event, neither the stars nor the universe would be as they are now. And it is clear that life could never emerge. Our omniscient Lord has determined this value at just the level it needs to stand at. In other words, 1.6 times 10 to the 19th. Allah is the Almighty, He who knows all things. How can I exist without a creator? I am not aware of any compelling answer ever given. I believe that there is a God and that God brings structure to the universe on all levels from elementary particles to living beings to superclusters of galaxies. The neutron does not know what mass it needs to have. Neutrons have a stable mass of 1.67 times 10 to the minus 24th grams. If the mass of the neutron were 2% greater than this, neutrons would quickly collapse and atoms would become unstable. In such a state of affairs, no element essential for life could exist. And the only element in the universe would be hydrogen. On the other hand, were the mass of the neutron to be slightly less, then in that case protons would have an unstable structure. That would mean the mass of the protons would be greater than the mass of the neutrons inside the nucleus, and the protons would degenerate and turn into neutrons. Physicists say that if the neutron mass were just two parts in a thousand smaller than what it is, it would be impossible for atoms to possess the structure they have. In short, there would be no such thing as life. Current questions now arising in cosmology, elementary particle physics, and microbiology have an obvious metaphysical or religious content. The existence of the universe requires me to conclude that God exists. Why does light move so fast? Light travels at 300,000 kilometers a second. This is a constant represented by the C in Einstein's famous formula, E equals mc squared. The E in this formula stands for the energy released when the material in the thermonuclear reactions in the stars turns into energy. If light traveled just a little faster than it actually does, then tens of thousands more times energy would be produced in the thermonuclear reactions. The energy in the cores of stars would be consumed more quickly and our universe would have been shrouded in darkness millions of years ago. And what would happen if light traveled just a little bit slower? In that case, the initial expansion of the universe would have been much slower and unable to escape the force of gravity. The universe would have imploded. In other words, life would have been impossible in either case. I am opposed to Darwinism, or better said, to the transformist hypothesis as such. No matter what one takes to be mechanism or cause of the postulated macroevolutionary leaps, I am convinced, moreover, that Darwinism is not in fact a scientific theory, but a pseudo-metaphysical hypothesis decked out in scientific garb. 
Nothing is more evident, more certain, than the existence or reality of God. The precise order in the wavelength of light. Our eyes enable us to see by perceiving only those rays in the universe that have a very short wavelength. Devices such as microscopes and telescopes always work according to the structure of our eyes and the light they are able to perceive. If light had very slightly different properties, then it would have been impossible to develop functional devices like the microscope or telescope. Our eyes have been designed to distinguish that form of light emitted by the sun that gives life to our planet. The fact that very powerful visible light moves in relatively short wavelengths makes it biologically possible for us to detect it. In order to see extended radio waves we would have to have eyes as big as satellite antenna and our eyes detecting infrared rays would serve no purpose. In such an event we would constantly be distracted because every object emitting light would do so at those wavelengths. If we were able to see infrared light, then the room you are sitting in would radiate brightly from top to bottom. The brightly colored rays that make up visible light have different wavelengths. These wavelengths vary between 39 and 75 parts in a million of a centimeter. Isaac Asimov one of the most renowned scientists of the 20th century describes the importance of the delicate arrangement of the wavelengths of light by saying, The shortness of the wavelengths is very important. The reason light wave travels in straight lines and casts sharp shadows is that they are incomparably smaller than ordinary objects. Waves can curve around an obstruction only when that obstruction is not much larger than the wavelength. Even bacteria, for instance, are vastly wider than a wavelength of light, so light can define them sharply under a microscope. If the wavelength of the rays that constitute visible light were any shorter, then we would be able to see neither a grain of sand on the beach nor microorganisms under the microscope. I think that scientists who devote their lives to exploring the Harmonia Mundi cannot help seeing in it some divine plan. I think God created the universe and life. Homo sapiens was created by God. Shadows created in order for us to see. One significant indication that light has a very special design is the shadow that appears when light is restricted. In daily life, shadow appears as negativities that make it difficult for us to see objects. The fact is, however, that shadows are a basic element in our perception. Were it not for them, we might have no idea about the size of objects and might even be unable to perceive them at all. Were it not for dark and light shadows, then all there would be is pitch black surfaces on which dark shadows fell, and surfaces with a uniform level of brightness. Our Almighty Lord has revealed this blessing He has bestowed on His servants in the Quran, saying, Praise belongs to Allah who created the heavens and the earth, and appointed darkness and light. There is so much in the physical nature of the universe we inhabit that the exact balances of everything needed to support life, every one of which is vitally necessary for development of a stable star with a planet that can support life. These physical properties of the universe lead me to favor a designer or creator. If one considers even a single protein, for example, glycogen phosphorylase 
This displays an immense complexity that it boggles the mind. Considering the processes of proteins synthesis, DNA replication and repair, and hundreds of equally complicated processes, one is left with a feeling best described as awe. Particles or waves striking the shore. What are the properties of the light that makes it possible for us to see the world, or rather, that part of it in which we live? Scientists seeking an answer to that question have been unable to reach a clear and definitive conclusion, despite all their years of research. The main subject of debate with regard to light is whether the light particles known as photons are emitted as particles or as waves. In crude terms, does light travel from one place to another like particles, or else like waves striking the shore? Light can sometimes be observed to move like the waves that form on the surface of the water when someone throws a stone into a swimming pool, and at other times it seems to possess the property of a material particle, striking at intervals like raindrops beating against the window pane. The interesting situation applies not just to light, but also to the electron, one of the fundamental subparticles of the atom. The electron also exhibits both particle and wave characteristics. This situation caused great confusion in the scientific world. This confusion was resolved as follows, according to the words of the famous professor of conceptual physics, Richard P. Feynman. Now we know how the electrons and light behave but what can I call it? If I say they behave like particles, I give the wrong impression. Also, if I say they behave like waves, they behave in their own inimitable way, which technically could be called a quantum mechanical way. They behave in a way that is like nothing that you have ever seen before. An atom does not behave like a weight hanging on a spring and oscillating, nor does it behave like a miniature representation of the solar system with little planets going around in orbits. Nor does it appear to be somewhat like a cloud or a fog of some sort surrounding the nucleus. It behaves like nothing you have ever seen before. There is one simplification at least. Electrons behave in this respect in exactly the same way as photons. They are both screwy, but in exactly the same way. How they behave, therefore, takes a great deal of imagination to appreciate, because we are going to describe something that is different from anything you know about. Unable to account for this behavior of electrons, scientists gave it a new name, quantum mechanical motion. Professor Feynman describes the perfection here by saying, Do not keep saying to yourself, if you can possibly avoid it, but how can it be like that? Because you will get down the drain into a blind alley from which nobody yet has escaped. Nobody knows how it can be like that. However, what Feynman mentions here as a blind alley is not in fact so. The reason why some people are still totally baffled is that despite all the manifest evidence, they still refuse to accept that a sublime creator brought these extraordinary systems and balances into being. Yet the position is crystal clear. Allah created the universe out of nothing, based on flawless balances and with no previous model. The answer to the question that Darwinists cannot escape, that they are unable to understand, that certain scientists keep asking them in the words, but how could this have happened, lies in the fact that Allah is the creator of all things, and that being came into existence through his commanding it to be. Allah has revealed this certain truth in the Quran. The originator of the heavens and earth, when he decides on something, he just says to it, be, and it is.